As a CRP awareness project, I wanted to make a trio of three simple watercolor paintings featuring these game birds that are found in Midwest America. I'll start with this Hungarian species, a gray partridge which was introduced to the Midwest over a century ago. I wanted to bring out the tiny patterns that appear on this bird's plumage as the seasons change throughout the year. These are the colors that the partridge would have in the late fall season. Tiny strips of masking tape that you see me peeling off helps define the white lines in his wing feathers. These tiny little birds camouflage very well in the brush and grass in the fall. And you don't hear them as easily as you would pheasants or quail because these partridges just make little faint peeps. So that's the only way you're going to hear them that I know of. I'm not a wildlife biologist though, so if there's any extra information on these creatures, feel free to comment that below. I want to point out that I left just a simple white background because the way I see it, these feather patterns are one of nature's many great works of art. On the Iowa Department of Natural Resources website, I read a very interesting story on how pheasants are said to have come to Iowa, since they're originally a Chinese game bird. The story goes that back in the early 1900s, just at the turn of the century, a severe windstorm allegedly wrecked the pens of William Benton's game farm near Cedar Falls, allowing around 2,000 pheasants to escape. Those pheasants began to flourish throughout the state because at that time, wire was not very common for making fences on the plains, so settlers would plant hedgerows to section off their land and keep their livestock in place. This made prime habitat for the pheasant, partridge, and quail which you'll see me working on here up next. The common pheasant became so popular in a neighboring state west of Iowa that this state, South Dakota, declared the bird as its state bird in 1943. However, the pheasant had been flourishing in South Dakota since 1898, which was around the time when most states began to see the bird appear in the wild. If any of you have spent time on Midwest farmland, you'll probably recognize the famous pheasant crow that you'll hear early in the morning or late in the evening. All three of these paintings were a lot of fun to create, but this one in particular was an extra challenge because I never realized how many different colors rooster pheasants have on their feather patterns. These different game birds that I'm painting here are well known in my home state of Nebraska where I grew up as a kid. Unfortunately, I see less and less of these upland game birds each year. The game and fish departments in most states around America report a massive decline in populations of these types of game birds. Over the past decade, a spike in corn prices and ethanol production led to an extensive destruction of CRP or crop production program habitat, so these birds don't have very many places to hide. Even this bobwhite quail, which is the only native species of these birds that was originally found in America, has declined in numbers throughout the Midwest and even on the East Coast, where you find the eastern bobwhite quail. All conservationists ask is that hedgerows be left around sections of farmland instead of being plowed all the way into the ditch and up to the side of the roads. If every last row is plowed and all that habitat is destroyed, we may never again hear the bobwhite whistle, the pheasant crows, or the faint partridge peeps. The three or four extra rows of crops just aren't worth the demise of these little birds. So be supportive of CRP. There are a limited number of prints available of these three birds in a trio. Feel free to message me if you're interested, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I will see you all next week.